<laughs> I get asked all the time, either on YouTube, Instagram, or in person, what are some great budget replicas? People ask me what they should start playing airsoft with. I don't have any problems with that. Ask away. I'll try to help as many people as possible. But how about instead of another budget-minded list, I make the complete opposite. How about I go over the expensive, the high-end, airsoft replicas I'd recommend to anyone who can afford them because of their performance, their reputation, and because of their undeniable fun factor. I thought this would make for a good video idea, so this is just 10 expensive high-end airsoft replicas I recommend. Right away, let me say that this list is in no particular order. I might save my favorite picks for the end, but no one particular choice will totally outshine the other in this list. If they do in your opinion, then let me know why in the comments, or tell me what high-end replicas would you recommend to someone with a four, five, or six hundred and above dollar budget. Also, most of these are coming from my own experience, so of course, expect some bias. These are replicas I personally recommend. I still know better to suggest everyone go out and buy ICS Galils. You people leave those alone, you're driving up the prices like no tomorrow. <laughs> and with that, I want to quickly thank SS Airsoft for sponsoring the US Airsoft channel, of course, as they're an amazing help, and GNG Armament, who are sponsoring a video like this one, and take my criticisms about the replicas and everyone else's on the chin, no problem. That's real respectable, so thank you GNG, and thank you SS Airsoft. So let's start this thing off strong. These are the quote-unquote heavyweights that I could have dozens of in my collection, but I still wouldn't have enough. If you want two great LMG recommendations for me, then get yourself an LCT RPK and a GMP Stoner 63. Any of the versions that you've ever seen will work, they're all great. In terms of rarity, they're becoming a more scarce sight nowadays, or at least around me. However, when you see either of these, then expect the user to have either a couple of these drum magazines, or expect a huge rate of fire, because the GMP Stoner 63 with an 11.1 .1 LiPo battery just vomits BBs. Compared to an M249 or any of the other saws out there on the market, these two are pretty lightweight at about 7 or 8 pounds, even with their steel constructions. I got my LCT RPK over the SEMA for this build quality and for the better looking wood furniture. But that was more of my personal choice. These LCTs are known for having some outdated internals. No MOSFETs, no active braking, or anything like that. These gearboxes are pretty old school. And that does turn some people away. But the GMP Stoner 63 shouldn't give you any problems. The price connected to the Stoner is pretty staggering. But if you're willing to make it happen, then you'll love it. I've met a lot of owners of these support platforms, and every one of them have nothing but good stuff to say about them. From the range, the controls, the easy to work on gearboxes, the battery space, and the looks people give them when they bring them to games. I personally like the Stoner 63 more, but I think the RPK is one of the best LMGs you can pick up for Airsoft. It's a big AK, so what do you expect? But I have one more recommendation for support. And it's the most expensive pick out of everything I could have picked for this list. So if you have the money, then get yourself the $1,800 to $2,000 GNG Armament GMG 42. An all steel and wood one to one replica of an MG 42 with removable barrel, a removable gearbox, mock belt of ammo. It's all the stuff that you've ever wanted out of an MG42 replica. This is the all-time must-have in my collection. This is my dream replica. Nothing else I can think of can top this for me. I'd want this more than a minigun. I can say that without a doubt. Without taking into account the classic side of airsoft like showy, escort, or top, I think G&G has the best MG42 replica out there internally and externally, but you really do need to pay for that. And I mean by $2,000.
With Call of Duty Vanguard out now, there's going to be a spike in World War II replica sales. That kind of stuff happens every time a new game drops. So I thought about the two best replicas for that time period and came up with the GMG-42 and the ICS M1 Garand. The GMG-42 might have ammo capacity and might feel as close to the real thing as possible with weight and function and build material, and the ICS Garand has a bit of that too. It's got the biggest ammo capacity for the M1 Garand at 42 rounds compared to the GMG, the ANK, and even the Gas Blowback Marushin model. It's got a full travel bolt, no stupid full auto switch, and of course, a real wood stock. Magazines are around $20, while the M1 itself can be had for about $400 or $500. I'm currently writing a full in-depth review for my ICS M1, and I'm having a fun time doing it, as this is one of my favorite replicas in my collection. I particularly like the range it can dish out even with a .32 gram BB, and how the trigger is no slouch thanks to the basic MOSFET it came with. The stock is great for storing even larger batteries, and wherever you bring this thing, people stare and ask to pick it up. This was the first AEG version of the M1 Garand we got in Airsoft, but I think it's still the best out there. But you can make an argument that the GNG version looks better. Both of these do have some proprietary parts, as most unique replicas do, so teching on them might be a chore or just expensive, so watch out for that. But if you want a couple of the best replicas to fit your World War II loadout, then here you go. Or you could always hunt down a Gewehr 43 by Shoei, that's gas blowback, for another $2,000. That's always an option. Okay, let's talk about some more unique picks with a couple meta ones as well. Airsoft is filled with M4 variants, everywhere you look. They're easy to get on the market, and nearly every airsofter has used one before, just like how nearly every Milsim enthusiast knows about the VFC 416. It's the meta for Milsim, and I say that about the first gen VFC 416 and the new second gen that you can get in tan or black for about $400 to $500. This is one of those heavily opinionated replicas in the community for sure, just like any VFC, it seems. It's either VFC is at the very top, or they're so far down the bottom for techs, and they can't understand why anyone would spend money on them. Thinking about it, I've actually had six or seven VFCs. I still love the M27 IAR I got, I dreaded the gas blowback MP7 and UMP, and I'm still a little indifferent to my MP5 with Avalon internals. I think it could have just been a whole lot better, but I can use a VFC416 stock at any event and do well. It's the operator's pick for replicating Special Forces loadouts, and the original VFC416 is what the first Polar Star Fusion engine was built for. These replicas are built tough. I mean, tough enough that an old friend of mine broke his collarbone since he fell on one while running up some stairs at an event. The triggers are pretty snappy, they're fully trademarked for all the H&K fans out there, and whenever special editions come out, they all disappear before popping up used for sometimes double the original price. Right here, I have a limited edition VFC 350C 417 DMR. I know, that's a mouthful. If you didn't know, the 417, the 416, and the M27 IAR are all about the same for exterior build quality. But I got this one for $450, but I know I could get $1,000 for it if I wanted to, just because it's the longer barreled limited edition. If I went over why the VFC 416 and its variants are such beloved choices, regardless of their $400 plus price tags, then I'd be here for a long while. The VFC 416 is kind of like Skyrim. No matter who offers them or how many times it's updated and relaunched, it's going to sell. Okay, maybe Skyrim isn't the best comparison. Right. You're going to see as we continue along that there's a lot of M4s on here. I can say all day that the ICS Galil is the best Galil on the market, or that LCT makes the best G3 that's an AEG, or the best HK53. But then again, this would be just a really long list of ICS, LCT, and VFCs. 
So this video is kind of tricky. I guess let me talk about a gas blow back then that I still have a lot of love for, especially since it's the AUG that we needed on the market. Because before this, all the AEGs kind of sucked. I'll talk about Viper Tech a little later, but I'm so happy to have a GHK AUG. The recoil is amazing and the build construction is tough, even though most of the body is polymer like the real thing. Anyone who's ever experienced a GHK would know just how fun they are to shoot. Trust me, a gas blowback will always be more fun to fire than a standard AEG. Even if the ASG or the Tokumuri AUGs were built like a VFC 416 or a GNG GM42, it wouldn't matter because it's still not gas blowback. Make a gas blowback MG42 that's reliable and you'd make history in the airsoft world. GHK is known for their AKs, but for me, the GHK AUG is really underappreciated. The price holds it back as you'd assume, but if you had deep pockets, then this is the best AUG out there, and I'll always recommend it to whoever wants one. Also, if you can get a VFC PSG-1, then just do it. The Tokumuri version was cool, but it's easy to be the best PSG-1 when you're the only PSG-1 on the market. But back to the M4s and variants, I'm going to quickly cover two more VFCs that have made a sizable splash in the more tactical-oriented Milsim community. I wish I could have list a couple ENL AKs here and there, but I've seen my share of rusty ENLs, and I've dealed with several terrible hop-ups and stripped-apart pistons. I've tried to review a couple ENLs before, but they always crap out so early in the reviews. So that's why I'm instead showing off the VFC MCX and the SOP Mod M4. But if you don't like either of these VFCs, then the KWA T6 or T10 could take their spots. This isn't supposed to be a top 10 M4 as I recommend, but I guess this makes things clear as to where most high-end companies focus their attention and money. These two VFCs can usually be had for about $450 each, however they offer a different vibe. Do you want a very modern and hot replica of something that was in Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Battlefield 2042? Or do you want a more basic, raw, but classic M4 with some great internals and build construction? I would like to put either of these in my collection since I've messed with them at just about every field I've been to. The SIG MCX just looks good to me, even though the QD mount on the VFC is totally useless. And I hear that some techs hate having to work on them but I do like more classic ARs. That's why I hope to see the same thing done to the SOP Mod M4, but to some M16s. I don't care if that's the A1 or the A4, any of them would be great. But back to the MCX, they have had their share of magazine feeding issues. They just seem to like EPM1s or other heavier spring equipped magazines. Oh, and get a max hop up. I've been told that over and over again, even if I show an ounce of wanting an MCX. I've dealt with a lot worse. I just can't understand how the MCX either gets a lot of praise or a lot of anger thrown at it. The SOP mod and the KWA Ronins are a bit more neutral when it comes down to it. The Ronins have an adjustable FPS, which is nice to see. They come in two different lengths, different colors, and they just perform on the US fields with flying colors. I just really wish that I still had my T6 but mine was stolen a year ago. They are a little bit heavier compared to the VFCs that I just mentioned, but I still really like these KWAs. And just like that, I'm at nine replicas, and that went by pretty quickly. And yet, I don't have any pistols on this list or any Tokyo Maruis. Actually, I have a lot of gaps, so I can fill those up really quickly with a little rundown of a few mentions that I put off to the side. I just took a look at the ICS Challenger High Kappa in the last video, and I highly recommend that because of all of its out-of-the-box benefits over the Tokimuri Gold Match High Kappa. I don't know what makes a sidearm high-end, but people would argue that $200 is pricey for a High Kappa. Another great pick would be the Tokimuri NGRSs. Pretty much all of those are amazing, from the scars to the new MP5 that they released not too long ago. Electronic blowback is usually a big no in my book for anything I want to collect, but for most of the community, Bolt, LCT, and Marui get away with it. All those companies put out some great EBBs. 
but I gotta give Marui the credit for being more diverse with their lineup. I just need to get one of those Scar H's someday. Preferably not for $700, but I guess beggars can't be choosers. I should probably give the LCT RPK-16 some love, even though I mentioned the more old-school RPK already. I've also talked a lot about LCT and VFC, so I really need to look elsewhere. Vipertech is a great place to look if you want the absolute best gas blowbacks on the market. Or at least that's what I've been told, and seen written when most people talk about VT. I'll admit that I've sent an email asking if Vipertech would like to do some work together, so let's hope that goes over well. I love that they make more classic pieces like the M16A1, so if the exterior build quality is better than garter steel kits or real sword, and the internals are capable of giving me 200 foot ranges consistently, even on colder days, then I'll give it my respect. Then for my last quick recommendation, I just gotta bring up the GNG Banff Team Rifle. I'm so sad that I had to give mine away, but it went to a good home. It was heavy because of the billet aluminum body, but it just stood out everywhere I took it. It just looked so good. The trigger was great, and when I played with a bottle of .3s, I was mapping people. I absolutely loved that GNG, even though people didn't understand that you could turn off the auto ejection feature, and that it had nothing to do with the replica and everything to do with the switch on the magazine. But it's whatever. I, I like the Cobalt Kinetics BAMF Team Rifle, and that's all that really matters. I'll play and use whatever I want to, and I'd recommend that you do the same. Just have some fun out there. I might have gone over 13 replicas already when I was supposed to stop at 10, but I promise that these are the last three recommendations. I've got something unique, something tried and true, and something HPA. So let's start off with the ASG Scorpion EVO 3, because it will be on a lot of people's recommendations list. Now have you ever held one of these before? The $400 price tag doesn't seem too bad when you take a few shots at range with an EVO. Just take a look on the web, you'll see hundreds of videos, reviews, unboxings, photo shoots, and more of the CZ that's been out for 7 years. It's easily on the list of one of the most respected airsoft replicas to ever be made, even with that higher end price. I'd like to think that level cap made this super popular for us airsofters, but I can't deny how well it's loved in Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Battery space was very limiting, even with the carbine variants that were put out a little later on, and the gearbox was proprietary, but we really didn't care. It's just too nice. I want one, and you probably do too. Just go watch some of the videos over at first so you can really appreciate it before getting one yourself. You won't be disappointed, just be sure to get a bunch of magazines though. You'll for sure need them. But if you want another basic AEGM4, just in case you didn't like what the rest of the community is using, then how about a little unknown company called Crytac and their CRB? Now the SPR and the CRB are pretty much interchangeable, it just matters which barrel length you prefer, but I picked the CRB since they're just a little bit more popular in the community. Just like the VFC SOT mod, there's not much else to say that hasn't been said already and over and over again. It's an M4, it's the most supported platform in the game, and the Crytac CRB is very basic. You do get a rail for all your attachments, you get a rotary hop up, the gearboxes are usually well put together, and people run them for years without any maintenance at all. In a lot of ways, they're like Honda Civics. You can trick them all out if you want to, or keep them all stock. It's a Honda, so it's gonna work. I'm trying not to make car comparisons here, but this just makes sense to me. They're affordably priced for their quality, the team behind Crytac are very professional and insightful people who have been in the game as players and as engineering experts for so very long, and they wouldn't be selling so freaking well if they were bad. Again, they might be basic, but that does the Crytac CRB and SPR a lot of justice. I even bought my own Crytac not too long ago. It's not a CRB, but I do like my LVOA just the same when I need to be more magazine friendly with my team members. Then finally, for my last pick, I'll admit that I've never tested one of these before. I haven't played or owned one, 
I haven't even asked about what makes them so special until just a couple days ago. But I know this was one of the most recommended replicas when I asked my YouTube community what should be on this list. So here's what Wolverine MTW fans had to say about their 700R plus HPA setups. The MTW is a great performer right out of the box just the way it is, while other HPAs need to be built up. That takes time. The engine is perfectly aligned to the hop-up unit and that makes for a perfect seal that will increase range and accuracy. It doesn't have the most tunability, but the tuning that's available is easy. The customer service is phenomenal and it's probably the best Airsoft has to offer. The owner, Richard Lort, will work with you himself over the phone if he has to. I was actually surprised to hear that multiple times when I talked to owners. They went on to talk about how they can use standard AEG barrels and buckings, that they can pick up several versions with differing build qualities if you have a lot more cash to spend, but how the standard billet bodies have been torture tested over and over again by Wolverine in a bunch of videos. And just like GNG and the ASG EVO 3, if you use Wolverine magazines, then you can take advantage of an automatic cutoff feature once the mags run dry. Wolverine MTW fans are a very dedicated bunch, and now I know why. I had to look up a few videos and talk to several people to understand, but I think the MTW makes for a great finisher for this countdown. And that's it. We've gone over 16 replicas just like that. 16 expensive high-end replicas that I recommend. There's a bunch of gaps that need to be filled in, and as much as I tried, there's not many AKs or really undiscovered replicas that I could have mentioned. Of course, the Tokumari Mark 23 SOCOM is legendary, along with dozens of others, but I guess that's where you come in. Let me know what else should have been in this list, or let me know if you run one of the replicas that I listed in this video. This video idea was literally thought up at like 3 in the morning while I was trying to fall asleep, and I've been working on it nearly non-stop over the past few days, so if you enjoyed it, then why not give it a like or subscribe now? Nearly 70% or 80% of people who watch my channel aren't subscribed, so why not do me a favor and try to help me flip this number around? It would really help me bring out more content and get a hold of more equipment to improve my videos. So if you subscribe, then I owe you a thank you. Now a huge thanks goes out to SS Airsoft who have been a great help over the past couple months. I'll actually be at their arena on the 19th through the 21st of November getting gameplay and filming with C7 Viper Airsoft, so I hope to see you all there. And of course, a thank you to GNG Armament for always supporting my content and sending new gear for me to take a look at and share with all of you. And I cannot forget about the US Airsoft channel members, the people who go above and beyond to support the channel, like Sir Turd the Third, V Shadowstalker V, C7 Viper, Curry Airsoft, Hamish Watson, Beaver Gaming 64, and everyone else you see on your screen now. All these people really help me out and that's why I give them shoutouts in every single video. They also get exclusive perks like getting to watch videos early, knowing what videos are coming up next, and even helping decide on what videos come up next. And you can enjoy those perks too if you join today. Just hit the join button on the US Airsoft homepage or down below this video. I'll even give you a shout out in the very next video and to any other new members who join up. But until that next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I will be sure to see you all next time.